Good morning, everyone. Morning. Morning. Yeah. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. So, so we'll uh, then uh, try to calm up uh, all the contents. Uh, and targeting nearly around five years, five uh, hours. So, uh, I think uh, this match as well, you will have a batch representative. So, please, uh, put, please, uh, please put the phone number of the batch rep uh, in the chat. Okay. And during the discussion, you, you can uh, use the chat as well as you all can directly. Uh, talk uh, in the session. So then uh, we'll try to start it, okay? Uh, these are the uh, set of machines uh, I am planning to discuss with you uh, during this two-day session. So here, uh, if we take first uh, four uh, machines, actually they are implements. So you can see mold board plow, disc plow, rotary plow, harrowers. So we, uh, in agriculture, we use these implements uh, to prepare the lands. Uh, similarly, if we take, uh, when we consider the present conditions, so most of the time, uh, people are also using excavators for the land preparation and uh, adjusting their lands in many ways. So actually the first column includes many machines under uh, land preparation. We have many columns of the equipment. We have many equipment. We have many equipment. Then if we move to the second column, uh, there you can see soil digger, tea harvester, leaf cutter, bush cutter, grass cutter. So they all are mainly uh, uh, used in tea cultivations, especially for different uh, uh, field practices, uh, which are conducted in a tea plantations. And then if you move to the third column, so there you can see mini multi-chopper, multi-chopper, bush cutter, uh, paper thresher, fiber extractor. So uh, we need these equipments in small scale farm operations. Uh, especially uh, if we are producing compost, then we need uh, these choppers. So you can see there are uh, small size choppers and the SLS, uh, comparatively somewhat bigger uh, chopping equipments as well. So then uh, there are bush cutters, uh, especially when we consider uh, pepper and other um, 
spice crops. So we need uh, some threshing activities. So we need to separate uh, some plant parts from the others. So then, in that case, we have to use threshers. And uh, sometimes we need to extract the fiber components. There we need fiber extractors. So likewise, the, the items given in the third column are used in uh, normal farm practices. so likewise, I am just giving you a brief introduction about the things we are going to cover uh, during these two sessions. And when I come to the, the fourth column, <coughs> the last one, there you can see many uh, equipments we are using for uh, facilitating the requirements uh, relevant for irrigation in a farmland. So there you can see a horse rail irrigator. So we discussed that one. It is a, a movable horse where we can uh, uh, use that equipment uh, within a farmland to irrigate considerably uh, longer area within very short period of time. And there are spray, spray pumps, power sprayers. So we can use them to irrigate as well as uh, in some cases for spraying some chemicals as well, we, we can use them. And then the, in the fourth column, last two rows, so there I have included several things regard to pumps, water pumps, uh, because when we uh, are applying water, we need to pressurize it. Otherwise, we can't apply it onto the required point. So here I have included two things, the engine driven pump as well as electric pump. Actually, when we take water pumps, I think most of you know, you know in our household, we are using water pumps. And if we consider their type, <coughs> mostly we know, uh, I think you all have experience uh, in uh, using some electrical water pumps. But there are some, uh, when we consider agriculture, uh, farm operations, mostly uh, there we can't require the, we can't fulfill the requirement using electric water pumps. There we have to use engine driven water pumps. The concept is same, but uh, the difference is uh, in our uh, normal water pump, uh, there's a, uh, inside the water pump, there's a gadget known as impeller that is driven by electricity using a motor. But if we consider an engine driven water pump, uh, the impeller part is operated by an engine. So I think uh, and another important thing is, so um, these equipments and machines need a power source. Uh, Okay. 
ජල සම්පාදනයේ මූලික වන කරන අර අවශ්‍ය ජල පීඩනය ලබා දෙන්න අපි වතුර පොම්ප ආකාර පාවිච්චි කරමු. ඒතකොට මම හිතන ගොඩක් අය දැකලා ඇති gedara තියෙන වතුර පොම්ප ඒක මේ විදුලියෙන් ක්‍රියාත්මක වෙන්නේ. හැබැයි අපි වගා භූමියක් ගත්තොත් ওই විදුලියෙන් ක්‍රියාත්මක වන විදුලි මෝටර් එකකින් ඒ ජලාශතාවයේ සපුරන්න ටිකක් අමාරුයි. මොකද අපිට ටිකක් ලොකු ධාරිතාවයක් තියෙන පොම්ප එකට යන්න බෑ. ඉතින් මේ පොම්ප ගත්තොත් ඒ වගේ අර ඇතුලේ තියෙන ඉම්පෙලරේ කියලා කොටසක් ඕක තමයි අපි මේ මේ බ්‍රහ්මණ චලිත එකට ලක් කරලා ඒකෙන් තමයි ඔය වතුර පොම්ප කරගන්න පුළුවන්. එතකොට වෙනස් වෙන්නේ විදුලි මෝටරේ වෙන්නේ මෝටරයක් පාවිච්චි කරලා විදුලියේ විදුලි මෝටරයක් පාවිච්චි කරලා මේ ඉම්පෙලරේ වැඩ කරනවා. ඒතර ඉන්ජිමකින් වැඩ කරනවා කියලා කියන්නේ शक्ति Uh, equipments and gadgets so they need power <laughs> and most of the time to fulfill their power requirement uh, in farm scale we are using tractors mamme kiyanne meka me thama ugannanna patan gathena meka thama me samariya kiyanne me me thiyana upakarana उसेरी प्लव and harrows to operate them on a field basically mostly we are using tractors because tractor itself can produce power so it is a, a land vehicle so yeah, if we consider a motor car the motor car itself can generate its own energy and for that task these uh, vehicles have a special component which is known as engine so what i want you to tell here is most of these machines are powered using engines me tiyana component bohumaya veda karanna engine wali so in our uh, lessons uh, initially at the, the in the first two lessons i am mainly discuss with Recording stopped.
Can you hear me again? Now, yes, sir. I'm very sorry, there was a power failure. Sir, we can't see the slides. Recording in progress. Let me show you. Okay, so thank you. Recording in progress. So I've been talking with you about uh, the usage of tractors uh, to handle these uh, implements because uh, they itself can, cannot produce power. For that case, they need another, another machine which can produce uh, power itself. So there we are using tractors mainly to operate uh, these implements. Uh, and if we take, uh, so I'm going to connect uh, all these equipments in different as, as, uh, aspects, okay. Uh, first, if we take tractors, uh, I, now I have moved uh, it from the implements into the tractors. If we consider tractors, so mainly there are two types of tractors we can use in our farm uh, operations. There are two wheel tractors, uh, which has two uh, number of wheels uh, in the tractor. They are known as two wheel tractors. And the other one, four wheel tractors, the tractors which contain four number of wheels are known as four wheel tractors. So, uh, and uh, if we consider uh, the power generation process uh, of these tractors, as I mentioned you earlier, they have engines. And if we take engines, mainly based on the source of power, the engine engines use, we can divide them into two main categories based on the power source or the fuel type. So you all know there are two main types of fuel available, petrol and diesel. And also, based on the mode of operation of these engines, again, they can be categorized into two groups. They are four-stroke engines and two-stroke engines. Uh, I think in the first two sessions, we are going to discuss about these uh, engines, their cycles, and how, uh, uh, how these engines um, work uh, during their cycles. So we'll discuss these things during the first two sessions. So here, uh, the important thing is, uh, mainly if we take, um, actually these tractors, are, uh, they are not uh, designed to uh, operate on normal uh, 
roads. So actually they are field vehicles. It means for their operation, they need a bit higher power than a normal vehicle. So uh, most of the time, because of that reason, most of the field vehicles as well as heavy vehicles, for their operation, most of the time, diesel engines are used because diesel engines uh, are comparatively reliable as well as uh, uh, cost-effective in operation be compared to normal uh, uh, light vehicles. And uh, that is why uh, these engines are um, used for the heavy vehicles as well as for the farm uh, vehicles, like tractors. Uh, normally petrol engines, we are using for light operations, uh, not for the heavy operations. And uh, I think uh, uh, if we take two wheel tractors in our country, most of them are operated using diesel engines, especially the diesel four-stroke engines. And I will tell you uh, how these engines are different from each other based on their working cycles. Uh, and if we take, uh, I think you all know about uh, bush cutters or grass cutters. Uh, can anyone tell what type of engine they have? Especially if we consider a grass cutter, what type of engine it has? Two-stroke petrol engine. Yes, it has a two-stroke petrol engine. So assume that uh, if we consider, if we compare two operations, uh, land preparation using a two-wheel tractor and cutting grass with the help of a bush cutter or a grass cutter, you know the power requirement is significantly higher for the tractor operation if compared to the uh, uh, grass cutting operation by the grass cutter. So there, uh, we are definitely, we can uh, provide that higher power requirement with the help of a diesel four-stroke engine. So what I wanted you to know is, in terms of energy as well as reliability, strength, most of the things, uh, uh, diesel engines are uh, much favorable than the petrol engines because we are mostly using petrol engines for uh, uh, for light duties for uh, light tasks uh, actually i think uh, in simply you can have some examples if we take a lorry and a normal car definitely uh, lorry is operated using diesel engines and most of the time cars are operated using petrol engines. So um, I wanted you to know the difference. So when we are uh, discussing these equipments or the machines as well, you will learn that one because for most of the heavy tasks, we, we need diesel engines. So during the first two sessions, I'm discussing with you about these engines and there are engine cycles. So we'll discuss them in the first two sessions. And uh, likewise, I'm going to now link in uh, these equipments or the machines uh, using items or the, the systems common for them. Okay. So then uh, if we consider uh, tractors, uh, they are having uh, a specific fuel system because we know that there are two types of fuel. And for their operation, they are, especially there are design systems known as fuel systems. Uh, diesel fuel system as well as petrol fuel system we are discussing mainly. And uh, uh, if uh, I will tell you this again. Uh, if we consider normal engine operation to operate any kind of engine, it needs two main things. First thing is it needs air. 
second thing is fuel, either petrol or diesel. Uh, only with regard to petrol engines, there's a special component. So you may have heard it known as carburetor, which is a unique component only for petrol engines. The vehicles having petrol engines, they have a component known as carburetor. So we'll discuss that one uh, as well later. Then uh, we are operating, or we, when, when operating these equipments as well as tractors, in, according to the requirement, we have to adjust the power. So we can't use same power throughout the whole operation. You know, when we are operating a vehicle, when you are driving a vehicle, we can't use the same gear and same power for whole uh, journey, whole um, task. We have to change it. Sometimes, I think um, when we are um, 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 riding on mountains, when we are climbing the mountains, um, when we are driving along the mountains, we need, there we need, mostly we need uh, energy or the torque. But assume that you are driving on a highway, there you need speed. Likewise, according to the situation, based on the situation, we need to adjust the power and speed of these engines. There we are using power transmission system. So uh, uh, in a power transmission system, uh, we'll discuss these components, clutch, gearbox, and there are different gear types. So likewise, these basic things we are discussing under power transmission. So then, uh, um, especially if I, I think I have mentioned you uh, using tractors, we can operate implements as given here, mold, board plow, disc plow, rotary plow, harrowers. So to operate them on fields, uh, energy is not enough. In some cases, we have to lift them. And again, we have to lower the implements. Likewise, we have to do some activities with these implements. For that case, we have to use a special kind of system, which is known as hydraulic system. So this system is much effectively uh, be observed in many excavators. So they are, we can see the use of this system in a large extent, because to operate things, uh, these gadgets need hydraulic operation. So Tractor alert may implement to send a path current, but a collector back over excavator cell make a tower badly. It can make a back away a gut to them at the excavator and got to the JCP again. You got to them, eight year bucket take a handle like a veteran, some poor name hydraulic system make a power chicken. So, they are we are going to also learn some basics about the hydraulic system. So likewise, you can see here, uh, uh, so using the colors, I'm going to link these equipments, uh, some systems common with some systems common for them. So if, as an example, if we take excavator, it has an engine, it has a fuel system, it has a power transmission system and the operation is done with the help of a hydraulic system. And if you consider another example, if we consider the tractors, so they are having engines, fuel system and a power transmission system. So likewise, you can see um, these things can be linked together. Uh, and here, so if we take these machines, they all are operated using engines. So in diggers, tea harvesters, leaf cutters, bush cutters. So likewise, all the components linked using red color lines are having engines. 
So it means engines are common for them. We are Ratu Parting Link Kalatino coat of the engines. We can make a path that you could engine put it. It was say if we take uh, the equipments uh, joined with green color lines. So all they are having power transmission system. It means power transmission system is common for them. So likewise, here we can easily identify items or the systems common for them. So when we are learning or when I'm doing my sessions, what I'm going to discuss with you first is, first I'm going to discuss with you these common systems. Because if we know them, then based on this system, we can easily discuss these items. ंगल so um, if we know what is a power transmission what is the fuel system engine if we know the basics we can easily relate them to the multi chopper because if i take a multi chopper it has a engine so it mostly operated with uh, four stroke diesel engines it has a power transmission system to uh, change the speed of the blade set so likewise at the end you will you will be easily uh, discussing these uh, features of these machines. So for that, what I'm doing is, first, uh, before discussing these uh, implements or the machines, equipments one by one, what I'm doing is I'm going to discuss these main systems. Then you can easily relate them to these machines. And finally, you can make descriptions about those machines. Sorry. Podu components tika isal lakkaro tapi danti mana pulua? Orang mesin negara dek, orang tak make itu ilmu, mari make itu ilmu yang mana mesin negara kira? Apa dia kira na? Pulua. And then, and here the the implements are linked using blue color lines. Uh, mainly we are using uh, in irrigation purposes. So we can um, use them. Uh, um, in some cases, we can uh, just use them as irrigators. In some cases, uh, as a supportive uh, implements as well. So then, uh, with regard to the water pumps, I am planning to mainly discuss with you how how we can select them and how we can install them on a uh, field, like very basic things. So uh, this is the whole thing what we are planning to discuss with uh, these two days. So my, I think you can see here. I think. Um, I have linked them with, as I mentioned you before, I have linked them with different systems. So you can see here, most of them are at the end, except only one electric water pump. All others are having engines. It means the basic part, the most important part, common for all these uh, machines or equipments is engines. So in this uh, lecture series, I'm going to give some higher priority for these engines, because you can see uh, in here also, definitely there are uh, three types of engines are given here based on their operation as well as based on the fuel type. So first, because most of the time, mostly for uh, heavy needs of um, um, relevant to the farm machinery. In most of our farms, uh, farmers are using diesel four-stroke engines. So I'm going to 
to start the discussion from the diesel four stroke engines. So first I'm going to discuss you what, what is, uh, uh, because they are operated using cycles. So what is an engine cycle, how it works. And then uh, and there are some, uh, maybe there are two mechanisms in any engine operation. I will discuss them as well. So likewise, uh, the first two session, the today whole session, I'm going to uh, discuss with you about this engine. So that is the main part because all engine is common for all these components except the electric water pump. So it is our main priority here to discuss uh, all their basic aspects. So, monkey with me, the TNA AI got hammer machine, hammer equipment, take a pen at the Hameka Kumedakar and engine the approach. The other thing got to them, the Lanka Godak, Mayo get in a engine, Medakar and Bahutra, four stroke diesel engine, a cup, gun and a cup, Medakar and Diana in the Miller. Anitaka, Shakti, Vashatavi, Sapara, some poor Nakin. We made the cutting at the Tino Bahutria Parchka post of diesel kinor. The engineer Kadaka not a key, Kriakari, Ted Balapan, more the Kriakar come take up Tino. Saman in Kriakari, well, Vedaka at Koman, a Pio Kumatika, may any like a session they give me. Kata, so that is about a brief description about what we are going to do in these two. Uh, I think now the time is 9.35. Uh, so we are going to talk about the engine. We are going to talk about the engine. We are going to talk about Then we'll have an amy is by a big daddy. Hello, a break. Kakaranga election at Patanga, capital legal for the introduction. Like that, we'll start after 15 minutes break. Okay. But again. I think we can now start back. So before doing this one, so can I know uh, how many know about engines? Uh, are there anyone uh, who has Learn something about engines. So then it is 
uh, easy for me to do this. Can you get a good and let them go? Don't do this. Don't know. So if you don't know anything, please just let me know because then uh, I can do it in a better way. Let's say I have a student. So if the if the majority don't know, then I can do it in the most simplest way. Then it will be easy for you to understand. I think uh, among the response I I have received, uh, many of them don't know uh, many things about engine, so then I can do it in the simplest way. So uh, here, first, thank you, Andrata, uh, and many others. For, for you, uh, in, so we'll do it in the simplest way. So first I'm going to discuss with you about diesel four-stroke engine. Uh, here you can see a uh, single cylinder. It has only one cylinder, single cylinder diesel four-stroke engine. Uh, <coughs> so the first thing is, I think, if you know nothing about this, first we have to identify the main components. For that one, what I'm doing is, uh, I think that in this way, I'm going to uh, just see the this engine from this end. Uh, I'm going to uh, just see uh, about this, uh, look into this engine from this end and make a small drawing, including its main components. Uh, this uh, actually, in, in, uh, this shows the cross-sectional view. In, uh, and this red color one, is known as the cylinder. It means in, in, in the actual way, it looks like this. But here you are given a cross-sectional view. So uh, this is after making a cross of this so I'm going to first include here the cylinder. It is known as the cylinder.
It's the first component, cylinder. <clears throat> and inside the cylinder, you can see here, uh, there is a component which is named as piston. So this is named as piston. So if we take this piston, this piston can move up and down inside the cylinder. The piston is a cylinder, atole, yalatai pahalatai gavan karana pulu. Like this, okay? And moves up as well as down. Then I think you all can see here there is a shaft done that pain, didn't it? So I have marked just using a line that uh, shaft, which is known as crank shaft. And here I'm going to draw it in here the way how we can see it from. This end. With any pain at the other, make it with an api and the lamana. So you can see here there is a special, uh, it has a special shape. So this is the current shaft.
So now what to be there, you know, uh, three components. What is cylinder, piston, and the crank shaft. So crank shaft means the shaft you can see here. And then I think you all can see this one. So here, yeah, I think you all can see this one. And um, in this line, you can see there is a connection, a line, or a rod connecting these two items, piston and the crankshaft. So you can see there is a rod. I have highlighted it using a line. So you can see there is a rod which connects both piston and crankshaft together. That one is known as connecting rod because it is a rod which connects piston and the crankshaft. That is why it is named as connecting rod. The front is named as connecting rod. And then uh, I think you all can see <laughs> in the same shaft, it means. In this crankshaft, at one end of that shaft, there is a larger, a bit large wheel. That wheel is named as slide wheel. The crankshaft is a slide wheel. The slide wheel is here. So, uh, especially to uh, discuss about a uh, four stroke engine cycle uh, of a diesel engine, mainly uh, 
we need these components. So you should know about these components to clearly get the uh, exact idea uh, of this uh, exact idea about the engine cycle. So after now, I think uh, you know what is cylinder. Then inside the cylinder, there is a piston. And at the bottom, there is a shaft, which is named as crankshaft. And in between the piston and the crankshaft, the connection is made using a special rod that is known as connecting rod. <laughs> <laughs> better to mute yourself. <laughs> Come here, I'm going Uh, so I'm talking about these main components. So at the end of the crankshaft, there is a large wheel known as fly wheel. And uh, so, uh, and also um, at the top of this cylinder, there we can see another three main components, including two valves and a component named injector. So here, Wow. So these are known as wells, and here this engine has two types of wells. One is known as inlet well. And the other one is known as exhaust valve. So I'm going to use two main colors to separate these two valves. I'm using this blue color to show you about, to show you this inlet valve. And I'm using maroon color. This inlet well, uh, this uh, pink color one, or maroon color one, named as exposed well. Mm. 
the other one is uh, the pink color one is the exhaust well Exposed. And I told you uh, at the top of the cylinder, there are three main components, uh, uh, including two valves and one component. And the component is named as injector. This component named as injector. So in between these two wells, there's a component named injector. So there you can see the injector. There may be an injector in that well and the exhaust well. So yeah, now you can see if we can again um, go through these components. The first one, cylinder. Inside the cylinder, there is a component named as piston, which can move up and down inside the cylinder. And there was a shaft named crankshaft. Piston and the crankshaft connected using a special rod named as connecting rod. At the one end of, at this end of this crankshaft, there's a big larger wheel known as fly wheel. If we consider the top part of this cylinder, there are three main components, two valves and a component called injector. So mainly we need these items. So first I'm going to discuss with you about four stop engine cycle of this diesel engine. To discuss that one, we need to know these components. We are going to discuss the operation based on these main components. These components are also named as basic engine components. So uh, I'm again going to uh, draw another view of this engine. Then uh, you can have a better idea about this engine like this. Um, so assume that if, if we can look this engine from this end, now I'm going to make the same sketch by looking at this end. Then we'll see how it looks like. it looks like it's uh, 
uh, at the end. So if you can see the crankshafts from this end, you can see it like this. Crankshaft may be the middle of the paper. Okay, so Make up, make range of the idea, and if the thing of the loot, pain and the memory and the thing. It's what I wanted you to. Uh, get here from this is you should focus on the the connection in between piston and the crankshaft you have to have some idea about how these components are connected together make components ikkata sambandha vela thiyena aakarayame hariyatama therugannu one ekayame andala penna
I'm telling you again, you should have kind of idea about how these components, especially the piston, connecting rod, uh, and crankshaft are connected together, the way how they are connected. So that's why I have drawn the same thing in a different view. So then you can have kind of better idea about than its previous view. So, uh, uh, because we in, in the next uh, step, we are going to discuss about a special kind of motion these three components have. So for that one, for before going into that one, you have to have better idea about the way how these three components, especially the piston, connecting rod, and the crankshaft are connected together. So then, so we are uh, looking into the same structure from uh, this end. Then we can see the flywheel like this. So then we can see the like this. Now we can. So there also we can see a, a small gear wheel. We can also include that one here as well. So we'll include that gear as well. Then it will be easy for you to identify the part. That is how it looks like. So this is how you can see the crankshaft uh, connecting the piston from this end. piston crankshaft connecting I think and at the same time, at the very beginning, I told you that this piston can move inside this cylinder up and down. For facilitating that movement, it is very much essential to have this type of connection in between uh, the piston and the crankshaft. Mevangi piston negata make a atule cylinder atule yella pahala gamankarandana. Via Yutemukada, Anima Rema Mevagi, some bandataviat, make components tundana atra tibia yutu. And another thing you can see this 
crankshaft, flywheel. So they are connected together. Flywheel and the connecting rod, the two components are connecting together. So then you can see piston with this arrangement. So here you can see because of this arrangement of the uh, crankshaft, by making a motion on this flywheel, we can easily move the piston either up or down. <laughs> That is number one. I am again telling you, please uh, let me know if you can imagine with this arrangement by making, by putting some power or by rotating or by rotating the flywheel can you all imagine by doing that thing whether the piston can be moved either up or down inside the cylinder? Can you imagine it? If okay, please, yes. Yes, sir. If you, okay. Uh, so others can, uh, if you can imagine it, please put the yes in the chat, okay? Then I can yes, go easy. I think uh, most of you can uh, imagine that one, no? And uh, it's very good. So I'm uh, a so uh, I think uh, yes, you all can uh, you all can imagine that one, no? Monkey, ne? Me, tiya na sakasna bata flywheel leka matam balaya kya duwa piston leka ihala pahale avan na pulwan kila teeran wala hariya thama hari. Okay, well, good. Mahesh, Eshan. Uh, number two, can you think or can you imagine with this arrangement by making a motion in the piston, making a motion on the piston, by moving the piston, can you all imagine by, by making, by, uh, by moving the piston, we can rotate the flywheel. Can you all imagine that one as well? The second task is by chain, by moving the piston, we have, with this arrangement, we can change, we can rotate the flywheel. Can you all imagine that one as well? Piston like a karakohama, flywheel like a karakinokila kutaganda pulot. Reversible processes. I think if it is okay, we can easily go into the lesson. So here, uh, I think for the second one as well, uh, many of you have mentioned, yes, can you all means you can imagine that one. Especially in this, this type of engine, when we consider piston, connecting rod, and the crankshaft, these three components are freely connected together. They are not rigidly connected. They are freely connected together. It means with this free arrangement, we can have two main type of, uh, we can create two main motions in this arrangement. Arrangement means uh, piston, connecting rod and, rod and the crankshaft arrangement. First one, as I mentioned you earlier, by rotating the flywheel, we can change or we can move the piston either up or down. That is number one. You all can realize that one. You all can imagine that one. 
Number two, the reverse process. By changing the position of the piston, we can change or we can rotate the flywheel. The reverse process of the first one. I think you all can imagine the two processes, the action as well as the, the reverse process. That type of motion here known as reciprocation motion. This motion is known as reciprocation motion. So uh, I will uh, write it down here. So these are the two processes what I need you all to imagine. So then I will show you some video, uh, a video as well. Then you can easily realize that one. Before trying to make a, a small picture in your, in your mind, then you will easily understand when you just look at to that video, look into that video. Uh, the, the first one, what I mentioned is, by rotating the slide Piston and we move either up or down. I think that is okay. Most of you have mentioned it is okay. You can imagine it. Number two, by Moving the piston either up or down, fine wheel. And I think most of you have mentioned that one is also okay. You all can imagine it. So this type of motion, the motion resulted due to these two actions, the type of motion resulting from these two actions is named as the type of motion. Resulting in this arrangement. Arrangement meets these three structures. Stem connecting knot and crankshaft. So these are the arrangement. Arrangement means piston, connecting knot, and crankshaft. The type of motion resulting in this arrangement is known as a reciprocation, reciprocation motion. So it is known as a reciprocation motion. So this one definitely may be in your MCQ questions, one of your MCQ questions. So you may be asked, what is the type of motion we can see uh, in Piston, connecting rod, and crankshaft arrangement, uh, the things together, what kind of motion we can see. Answer should be a reciprocation type motion. So you will be having MCQ question. Uh, 
patients. So there may be patient one, then definitely the answer should be engines are having this type of reciprocation motion. So now I will show you to have a better idea about this type of motion. Please give me a minute. I'm going to share with you a small video. Recording in progress. So there yeah, you can see that one. So don't think about the uh, strokes, just focus on, uh, on the movement of the piston, connecting rod and the crankshaft. So try to focus on this free movement of these three components.
so you will learn these things later so don't um, so just try to focus on the movement only So now, see the motion you can see here in these three components. The working principle. So see here the motion of the piston, connecting rod and the crankshaft. So you can see by moving the piston, we can make a motion in the crankshaft or in the flywheel. Or making the motion in the flywheel, we can move the piston. The working principle of these lanches. So, So now, uh, are you having a clear idea about that motion I'm asking? So that motion is known as reciprocate, reciprocation motion. So uh, up to now, have you all get uh, a good idea about that process? Reciprocation motion can be handled. If it is okay, we can easily move to the cycle. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So others also, uh, if it is okay, please put yes. If, uh, if if no, or if you have any doubts, please let me know, and then I will explain you again. Uh, if not, we can move further. Okay. So I'm always looking the majority. If majority says okay, then I can easily move to the next part. So up to now, I think things are okay. So, I think uh, I have mentioned this to you before uh, at the very beginning. Uh, if we consider an engine, it needs two main inputs, mainly two inputs. One is air. The other one is fuel. In, we are focusing on it. We are focusing here about diesel engine. So here the fuel is diesel. So I'm going to get that one here. Oh, man. Oops. 
of an alien. So the two main inputs are number one, yeah. So we have to tell it as purified there. Purified air. Number two, fuel. Yeah, since we are discussing about uh, the diesel engine cycle, yeah, the fuel is diesel. For giving these two inputs, so if we consider human body uh, uh, to digest the food we are eating, we have a, a digestive tract or digestive system. Likewise, to deal with the air, these engines have a special air circulation system. Then up here, I got to tell up here, and then up here, camera some bandit, we never put the dip, the raha, a jail, no part of it, or take in the mail, coma camera some bandit, the velacran. Similarly, in these engines, to deal with there, there is a special air circulation system in these engines. So now I am. Uh, the working principle of diesel engines was established in 1893 by inventor Rudolf Diesel. So when I go into the uh, Air circulation system. And it includes again two main parts. Okay. Air circulation system includes two parts. Again, number one. The num it has two parts. Sorry, Marga the Cactino. Engine Nicas engine Nicagato. Ea Mate Amantana Marga the Cactino. First one is from outside. Into the first one is from outside into the engine. Starting from the outside, AI is coming into the engine. The second part is. From inside, from inside the engine, into the outside. So here you can see two simple parts from outside into the engine, from inside the engine into the outside. Especially if we take the first path, this includes three main components, air filter,
Bild. Er filter. Er passage. Bild. Inlet. Well. So the first pass, first part, if we consider, so this, these are the components. Air filter, it passes through the air passage, then comes to the inlet valve, if we consider purified air. So the specialties from this part, mostly purified air is coming into the engine. Using the pass, passage, using this part, purified air is coming into the engine. Purified air. This is a pathway for the purified air. Then, so, uh, within another uh, uh, 10 to 15 times, I will uh, uh, teach you uh, a process known as combustion that will be happened uh, in this engine during the engine cycle. So normally after the combustion engine uh, will be full of combusted gas. So uh, when I'm teaching you about the engine cycle, I will tell you a process named as combustion that is occurred during the engine cycle. Uh, after that thing, or after the combustion, normally engine is going to be filled with combusted gas. I will, I will uh, show you how it happens. Just uh, take here it only. I will, uh, I will describe it to you how it happens, but up to now, just uh, take it. Uh, after the pr process known as combustion, the cylinder will be full of combusted gas. Especially this second pathway, we need to move that combusted gas out from the engine. So for the operation, we need air. When uh, consuming it, that purified air is converted into a combusted gas. So after making a combusted gas, uh, we have to expel it out from the engine. So for that one, we are using the second pathway, especially using this pathway, through this pathway, uh, combusted gas Recording stopped. Record recording stopped. Recording in progress. Yes, about there was again signal issue. 
and I'm talking about these uh, two passages engine uh, engines have with related to their uh, air circulation. I think now all uh, now you all can hear me. Is it okay? And on it, I parang. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and if we consider this second part, then second part starts from the exhaust valve. I think you know what is the exhaust valve we have mentioned here earlier. Exhaust valve. Then the air passage. And then silencer or the muffler. I think you have know. a doubt, sir. Yes. Tell me. So, uh, normally, uh, uh, the air will be purified from the air filter, isn't it? Why is it straight away from purified air to air filter? Uh, uh, no, no. I uh, just mentioned here because uh, from this first part, normally uh, we are using purified air just only to show that one only. And in the second part, we are uh, the second part is used by combusted gas. Okay. The first part used by purified air and second part used by the combusted gas. That's only okay. And I just mentioned about the main components each part has. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, don't mix up that one, okay? Just, I mentioned that in the first part, normally purified air goes. In the second part, normally combusted gas goes. Okay? Just don't mix. And so if we know these two things, then we can start about the engine cycle. So I'm going to again uh, tell you the things what we have covered so far uh, before moving to the engine cycle. Uh, so we uh, draw the main components here, the components necessary to discuss about the engine cycle. So we are discussing here the diesel four-stroke engine cycle and uh, here we now know the main components, cylinder, piston, uh, connecting rod, uh, piston crankshaft, connection is made between the connecting rod, one end of the crankshaft, there's a big large wheel named flywheel, then uh, another important thing is it, uh, relevant to the piston, connecting rod, and the crankshaft. They can freely move together resulting a special type of motion named reciprocation. Uh, then uh, we learn what is reciprocation motion and we learn with regarding to the air passage the engines are having two main parts. One is for purified air and is the other one is for the uh, combusted gas. So the next thing is we have to then, we know the basic everything with regarding to these engines. So now it is very easy for us to uh, do the engine cycle. So uh, before starting the engine cycle, we'll have a 10 minutes break and come. So now the time is 11, uh, 12. Uh, shall we again start by uh, 11, 25? Okay. Okay, sir.
So this session. So now we are going to mainly focus about the engine cycle. Now I'm going to start that part. Stroke. So for that one, uh, to discuss with you about this four stroke engine cycle, I'm going to use this diagram that I have given here. So mainly four stroke engine cycle includes four main stroke. So I will show you what is a stroke. It includes the type of four strokes. That's why it is named as four stroke. If we can name them, the first stroke is suction, then compression, power, and the final one is exhaust. So, I will take one by one. Here you see this diagram as the basic one. So I'm just uh, this one.
So now you know the piston uh, can be moved inside the cylinder either up or down. So here, And also, I'm going to hear into two main lines. Um, the top line is named as TDC line, which is the level, a piston, uh, which is the highest position uh, inside the cylinder where the piston can, piston top surface can reach. Piston ke matupite gatto. Cylinder yathule anna polo ihena mat thana kena pi TDC vastava kena. So we call that level as TDC. So I am showing that one to you now. So this level is known as TDC level. This is the line I told you that is known as uh, EDC level. And the next line known as BDC, that is the lowest level the piston top can reach inside the cylinder. Cylinder atulata piston negate and the pulu awa musatakina BDC matamakila, yellow musatakina, TDC matamakila. So I will first mark the two.
So I'm now going to discuss with you, Abrams, uh, as I mentioned you before, the first uh, stroke is suction. So uh, these are the four main strokes, suction. Uh, uh, we, so now I'm using a triangular shape going to indicate these two valves. Blue color one is the inlet valve, and the maroon color one or the pink color one is the exhaust valve. So what I'm doing is, if any valve is open, I'm going to show it like this below the line. It means it is open. If it is on the line, it means the valve is closed. I think you have uh, got that correctly. Always, if the valve is closed, I'm going to place these valves in much like this. If one is open, then you will see it like this. This is, uh, it, this shows it is open. And uh, so as, uh, as you, you all watched, in that video, normally, so always this piston, if I'm going to show it like here in so the piston can move like this. If it is moving down means, if the piston is moving from TDC to BDC means, it is moving like this. I think you all can see. So if it is moving from BDC to TDC, it is like this. I think this clear. You know that one. Okay. Uh, so what happens in the first stroke that is known as suction. Suction means, as I told you at the very beginning, uh, we also have discussed about the air moving parts as well. At the very beginning, I told you, if we consider an engine, it needs two main inputs, air and the fuel, here the diesel. So during the suction stroke, purified air is coming into the cylinder through the air moving passage into the cylinder. So that is the significant thing which has happened during this suction stroke. So let's see how it happens. The, the, the significance of the suction stroke is that is the stroke where the engine or the cylinder receive purified air from outside. So we will see how it happens. So I'm going to make a short note under the suction part. It's right here. So 
So here, always we are discussing this uh, engine cycle with regard to the piston movement, movement of the piston, okay? So here, in the first one, first stroke, piston is moving from PDC level to the BDC, like this. So you can see piston is moving from TDC level into the BDC level. So we can tell it piston moves from B C to so you all can see piston is moving from. PDC level to the BDC. So now I'm asking you a small question. Just to explain the process here, I'm using this diagram. Think that when the piston is moving like this, can anyone tell or you can text it, what will happen to the internal volume of this cylinder? What would happen to the internal volume of this cylinder when the piston goes down? Piston like a parallel at the cylinder at the Mukha the Venda Pulu. Volume is increased. Yes, very good. So here, due to this movement, Piston, uh, no, cylinder, internal volume internal volume increases. So Earlier, it means volume was very less. During the stroke, the volume is continuously increasing. In a, in a closed chamber, so we know that through the air passage, cylinder uh, through the inlet valve is open to the atmosphere. So if the volume is increased in a chamber, what do you think? What would happen to its internal pressure? When the volume increases, as a result, what happens is pressure decreases. Decreases as a result. Pressure. As a result, the pressure decreases. So the volume is volume due to that volume expansion. As a result of that, internal pressure going to be decreased. Another thing. Uh, and, and there's another thing happens. Please focus to this, uh, focus to here. Uh, normally we take during suction stroke. So I told you there are two wells. The purpose of the suction stroke is to take air into the cylinder. It means Definitely the first passage uh, starting from the air filter 
air passage, then the inlet valve, the path should be open, that is open by inlet valve. We consider that is kept as open. It happens like this, okay? So when starting the stroke, uh, the inlet valve remains like this. So then, uh, if we think, uh, then continuously piston goes down. With regard to that movement, valve is slowly open. So it bit by bit just go, uh, it, it just goes down. Okay. So when the piston come to the uh, middle of its motion, or the, when the stroke come to the middle, the, the exact middle of the stroke, that is the point where the valve is, uh, that is the point where we can see the valve as fully open one. Stroke my valve like a so until the middle of the stroke, it continuously open. Then after that, until the end of the stroke, passing the middle of the middle of the stroke, then it continuously closes. Patangana put air in the patangana. That in a put parima venava. It was a agata venapota. Apo vehigan. So until the uh, middle of the stroke, uh, the valve continuously open, then on back, it continuously closes. By these uh, two ways, throughout the stroke, anyhow, it is, uh, whether it is fully or not, anyhow, throughout the stroke, it is just open. We can have that one as well. Only the inlet is open. Okay. So during the stroke, only the inlet valve is open. Because of that thing, the passage is open. It means we compared to the atmosphere. Now, inside the cylinder, there was a pressure decrease. So now there is a pressure gradient from outside into the cylinder. The gradient is starting from the atmosphere extends into the cylinder. So we'll take that one as well. Due to this opening, this opening results a pressure gradient. There is a pressure gradient starting from the Atmosphere into the cylinder. By the way, go later. Atolata. Ah, pi dana. We bawa ya. Kita ni lah tiap. 
So then you into so then using the pressure gradient now Purified yeah. air is coming into the cylinder. So at the end of the stroke, uh, the total cylinder is filled with purified air. So at the end, the piston is around here. By that time, total cylinder is filled with air. Another thing, if we think, so we know that by making the movement in the piston, um, we can rotate the flywheel at the same time by making the rotation in the flywheel, we can move the piston. At the same time, I have to uh, mention you another thing. So, uh, have you all seen uh, the way of starting a two-wheel tractor? Uh, have you all have seen uh, how a two-wheel tractor is started? Two-wheel tractor at Panagandanakari Dekalatina? Yes, sir. Yes. Others? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, if, if you have, if you, uh, many of you have, if many of you have seen that. So, what we are, are a few know. So, any other who So any others who don't have seen how to, uh, the way of starting a two-wheel tractor. Now I know, two-wheel start. It's all handle. handle. Yes, very good. Uh, using a handle, we are starting it. So are there any others haven't seen the way of starting a two-wheel tractor? I think if some of you may have seen that at the very beginning of, uh, at the earliest time of inventing the cars, so they didn't include a switch. So instead they had a handle, but the driver has to do is before starting, when, when he needs to start the vehicle, using that uh, handle, uh, the driver has to uh, rotate the flywheel or the crankshaft. That is the way how the earliest cars uh, were started, were switched on. So what I need to tell you is, at the very beginning, engine doesn't have any power to it to move any of its items. Clearly get this point, okay? At the very beginning, engine doesn't have any cap capability or any power to rotate a single of its items. So when we are starting the engine, so if we take a new car, so when we are starting the engine, first uh, with the help of a motor, we are going to provide rotational power to the crankshaft. That is known as starter motor. So by switching on, 
we are just going to give some rotational power. So we, we have to rotate the flywheel using the starter motor. So initially, externally, we have to rotate the flywheel. Otherwise, engine cannot start. It means initially, engine itself cannot move any of its components. Only my engine if the same component is a so that happens during the, the, the very first suction. So when we are discussing this engine cycle, the suction stroke, somehow in, in any kind of method, we have to rotate the flywheel. So normally if we take a two-wheel tractor, two, the, the ideal example for this process is two-wheel tractor. Two-wheel tractor has only one cylinder. And to start the engine cycle, we have to rotate the flywheel. So I told you flywheel, crankshaft uh, are connected together. So if we need to rotate the piston, the only way we can do is by rotating the flywheel. So externally using a handle, we have to rotate the flywheel to initiate the engine cycle. So very first, we have to do work. So we have to rotate the flywheel to complete uh, and we have to help the piston to complete first stroke. Please get this clearly. Patangadima engine nekada kisima component ka karakwa ganda venas karaganda balayak then. Api karakwala de yutu. Either manually using a, using a handle or if we take a new vehicle, it contains a special component named starter motor. Using a motor initially, the first suction stroke will do for it. And uh, uh, another thing here, a stroke means a complete movement of the piston either from TDC to BDC or BDC to TDC. So you may have confused that a stroke means a complete movement, either TDC into BDC or BDC into TDC. That is a stroke. So the initial stroke we have to do. So not only the initial one, second one also we have to do because engine doesn't have any power. Have you all get that correctly? At the very beginning, engine doesn't have any power to rotate any of its items. Clear? Please, if it is okay, please put in the chat as yes. Because I am simply I am telling you these things uh, because you may have MCQs. If you have to write anything, you can write anything on your paper, but you are having MCQs, not like in the other subjects, especially if you can't get the theory correctly. So if you can't get the basic correctly, so you won't be able to give the answers for the questions. So I have experienced that one in last time. So many of you didn't answer the questions well. So that is why I'm telling you the very first, the basics. So if you know the basics, you can do anything in your exam. Okay. So I think uh, many of you have uh, got that. Uh, another thing is, uh, so from this part, I think uh, if you have 30 questions, nearly 10 to 12 questions can be asked from this this part because the other things we are discussing are most general things. So from this area, you, you can have many questions. So that is why I'm uh, targeting this area by taking much time. Uh, the, the another thing is, assume that uh, at the beginning of the stroke, the flywheel is at somewhere around here. Think that at the very beginning, flywheel is, fly is around here. So 
So with this arrangement, at the end of the stroke, so at the end of the stroke means that is the beginning of the next stroke. At the end of the stroke, definitely the flywheel is at here. So this is the end of the first stroke as well as the beginning of the next stroke. So can anyone tell how much of rotation has the flywheel completed here? One stroke for 180 degrees. Yes, very good. So you can see at the end of the stroke, when completing the stroke, you can see the flywheel has rotated 180 degrees of angle. So we'll add that one as well. Flywheel rotation. And then 80 degrees. So at the, at the end of the suction stroke, it has rotated 180 degrees. So that is the thing, all the things we have to discuss about the uh, suction stroke. So then I come to the next stroke, that is uh, thumb pressure. So I'm going to use the same diagram to explain you the things. And um, now uh, the, the speciality here is earlier the movement was from TDC to PDC. Now the uh, movement is having on the opposite direction. It means now it is moving from PDC to the TDC level. So like this. So now it is moving like this, okay, from BDC to the PDC. And here the, the specialty is uh, throughout the stroke, no valve is open. So I'm going to show it like this way. No valve is open during the stroke, means full on. Uh, because in the compression, so uh, it comes from the name as well. The stroke is named as compression. So we have to compress. So now we know at the end of the stroke, the first stroke, the cylinder is totally filled with air. And now I have told during the compression stroke, None of the valves are open. Both valves are closed. But think in this way. Now the cylinder is filled with air and the piston is now moving up. Definitely what happens is cylinder internal volume is going to be reduced. Then what would be the result? The cylinder is filled with air, but we are going to decrease the internal volume of the cylinder. So what would be the ultimate result here? Can anyone? <laughs> so here, the cylinder is filled with air and we are just now moving the piston up. So what happens now? The internal volume decreases. As a result of that, air pressure uh, increase. Yes, pressure increasing means what we are doing is the two wires are closed and we are just putting the piston up means in another way. But what we are doing now is we are compressing the air. That is why the stroke is named as compression stroke. So we can add things from here.
So here, so now the piston is moving from lead DC to the DC level so the state internal volume then by inside the cylinder the air is compressed so here another thing happened so assume that the piston is moving up and uh, Two, three seconds before ending its stroke. So we can name that situation just before ending the stroke. Just before ending the stroke, there's a special thing is going to be happen inside the cylinder. That is just before completing the compression stroke, injector injects diesel into the cylinder. So I'm again telling you, just before ending the compression stroke, diesel injects this uh, injector injects diesel into the cylinder. Can you imagine what would be the result of that? What would happen there? So inside the cylinder, there, there is compressed air highly compressed air, into that highly compressed air, we are putting, we are not putting, we are injecting diesel. What would be the result of this one? Look at me. Can anyone tell? We are injecting diesel into compressed air. So what would happen next? Look at Pendapul one. So you also can use you will ignite. Uh, uh. Yes, it makes a huge combustion similar to a blast. blast So we'll add that one. You know, she has fire. Yes, we can tell it as a combustion. It, it, it makes a, a huge blast inside the cylinder. So, we like that one. So, that is known as just before in the just before in the the stroke injector injects diesel into the into the compressed air makes And huge combustion inside the engine. But 
So it will create a huge combustion, like a blast. And it means now it is moving up. At the end of the stroke, we know now the piston is at here. So that is the beginning of the power stroke. So you can see here at the end of the stroke, now it is at here. So definitely, if we consider the, uh, the rotation of the flywheel, now it must be somewhere here. So now can you tell me what is the total rotation at the end of the compression stroke? 720. Uh, at the end of the compression stroke? Is it 720? 360. 360, no? At the end of the stroke, at the end of the compression, the rotation is 360 near to a single round. So now moving the things from. So the next movement is from So now there is a special thing. Uh, in the power stroke, I'm telling you this way, in the power stroke also, both valves are closed. No valve is open. So I can put it like this. Valves are both are closed. No one is open like this. Okay. And earlier, a uh, few minutes ago, I told you the way of starting a two wheel tractor manually using a handle. We have to start it. It means if we can relate here, because to make the suction, assume that we are going to start a, a two wheel tractor. Let's discuss this process based on a two wheel tractor. To complete the suction stroke, we have to rotate the piston by rotating the flywheel using a handle. In compression also, the situation is same. Still, engine doesn't have any power to move its single component. We have to do it. But at the end of the compression, as we discussed just now, just before ending the compression stroke, a, bla a blast happened because of the injection of diesel into the compressed air. And I told you, it, it is not a simple combustion. It is, a, it is almost like a blast. So now that blast transmit energy to the piston. So because of that blast, what happens is by taking the energy of that blast, now without any external help, now the piston itself can move down. Have you all get, got this clear? Is it okay? Without having external power, during the power stroke, because there is a combustion inside the cylinder. That power easily goes to the piston. By taking that power, now this itself can move down. Have you got this? So because of that thing, we name power stroke as the only active stroke in this engine cycle. All others are passive strokes. If we take suction, it is a passive one. Compression, passive one. The coming stroke, it is also a passive one. We are taking power stroke as the Oh, 
the active stroke of in waves. So now piston is moving from TDC to BDC level. Here also both pairs are closed. Both pairs are closed. And the, the significance is the piston piston itself moves down by taking the power resultant from the combustion. The piston itself moves down by taking the power result from the combustion. So that is the significance of the power stroke. So that we can name the power stroke as the only active stroke in the engine cycle. It is the only stroke is the only active stroke so that is the significant of this stroke that is the only active stroke so just I'm going to show you uh, show you this here using a graph as well and so like this, so I'm going to take here so we'll take the uh, we'll, uh, We take like this. As we can take here. First, let me take it as power of the system. Just we take this axis as the power of the piston first.
So we, then we denote each stroke by its first letter. I clear the first one, suction. the power so if we take um, the power of each node suction stroke piston doesn't have any power we have to move it during the compression it doesn't have any power but only during power stroke it gains power So it gains power, you can see. And also I'm going to uh, uh, mention you another thing. Assume that we are going to do this type of, this kind of activity here in this way, okay? So think that. Uh, think that there is a, a ball like this. And what we are doing is then currently. Uh, by uh, if I name uh, this level, so I'm Again, you all have to imagine this. Okay? There's a ball at one end, we have tied it to a rod, okay? Tied it to a cable. And by taking now the cable at point A, what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, uh, to, uh, to rotate one. In this direction, like a round, I'm going to rotate it. Clear? I think you all can imagine that one. There's a ball tied to a rope by taking the rope at point A. What I'm doing is I'm going to rotate it. Imagine that, that one, okay? What you may feel is just only the first or second round. 
we have to give some force to do the task. Clearly get this one, okay? Only for the first two, three rounds only, we need to give some power. Then the ball itself can rotate another three, four rounds without our help. Have you got this one? After that, the object itself rotate another two, three rounds. Clear? Is this clear? Yes. And if we think this way, uh, if we are using somewhat bigger ball, somewhat bigger ball and doing the same thing. Somewhat bigger ball and doing the same thing. How about now? What can you feel now? Is it uh, easier it compared to the previous one or not? Uh, I mean this one. So uh, in, in the first one, we need to rotate at least two or three rounds then by the object by itself rotate another two or three rounds what about now if the object is larger it compared to the previous situation i am asking about you uh, the rotation by the object itself does it does it rotate more than the previous one no. 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 Uh, so what happens is like this. So uh, you can try this one no? uh, by tying up a eraser, a small get a small eraser, then tie it up, and then using a rope try to rotate it. And we compare to eraser, get a somewhat bigger object, and do the same thing. What happens is definitely the bigger objects rotates more number of rotation by itself. Is it correct? How you feel that? The bigger objects rotate more around itself than the small object. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Uh, because that that concept is known as moment of inertia. So that is the that is why for engine, for an engine, we need a flywheel. Okay. So then the skande balapan at this? Uh skande balapana can it yagi had a bar well come up balapana, right? Skande with a headed balapana. Uh, have you got this one? Is it okay? So, 
Yes. I have got this one. No? Uh, so I have uh, put this here. So we know that uh, here, as given here, we know piston, flywheel, crankshaft, connecting load. These are connected together. So what happens is when the piston is taking power, after piston has taken the power, what happens is due to this arrangement, arrangement means piston, uh, connecting rod, crankshaft, flywheel. So these are freely connected together, but crankshaft and flywheel are fixed structures. So after taking power, when piston moves down, with that movement, piston can store the energy, but it has gained from the combustion. So it can store that power in the flywheel. So what it has taken from the, the combustion can store in the flywheel. So here, uh, because of that I, I put here rather than piston, better to put here like flywheel, power of the flywheel. I think you will have got that one. With that movement, piston can transmit that power into the flywheel. And because of the size of the flywheel, because this compared to crankshaft, this is just a shaft. But if we consider the flywheel, it is much bigger than bigger in size than the uh, all other objects you can see. That is just to store more power in the flywheel. That is why we have taken it as bigger. So that power is stored in the flywheel. Okay. So if we can uh, uh, draw that one in this uh, graph. So you can see during the suction compression, flywheel has gained no power from the engine. We have to do some work on it. But just after the compression, during the power stroke, it receives full of power from the combustion. But in the next stroke, you can see now engine doesn't need any other help now because now the flywheel is filled with, totally filled with power. So it means engine itself can do work without help of an outsider. So it means, now, if we can further plot this, you can see like this, by taking some power, the engine can have the exhaust stroke. And so it is a cycle, means uh, these things are continuing. So we can make the graph like this. I will show you. So I'm just only putting the first letter of each stroke here. So what you have to get here is once a successful compression has occurred, then only the engine itself can work. It means only for the first two strokes, especially the suction and compression, it needs some external help. Other than that, it can continue the system. So like this, by using the same power, now the engine can do the, the suction of the next stroke 
because this is a cycle, then finally the compression by using most of its remaining power. Then in a power stroke, you can see now it again refills the power, refills the flywheel power. So likewise. So uh, I think, is it clear to you? This happens continuously. So you can see gap is only at the very beginning. There onwards, the engine itself can uh, take the process. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. So and one thing, please, if you have um, got something clear, please uh, put it in the chat, okay? Then I can easily uh, get your majority idea and go ahead. And behind that, uh, and another thing. So now, can you uh, give, or can you, uh, give the exact function of the flywheel. So you can put that into chat as well. So can you mention the exact function of the flywheel? What is the exact function of the flywheel? Flywheel like harima kharibare kiyatabhavi. So you can put that into chat, okay? So then I can take a few of your answers and check whether uh, you are in the right track. So I'm asking, can you mention the exact function of the flywheel? What is the exact function? So I've got one answer, make an energy continue. That is from Anushka. Make an energy continue. Okay. Start the engine. Number three zero eighty five. Yeah. I think uh, starting the engine is not a function of the flywheel, no. So, uh, so can you give the, the answer more clearly? So I, I have given it. So what I'm asking is, and the another one three one four zero store energy from power stroke. I'm taking that one as well. 
So let's first see you all answers and then we can make it correct. So what about others? Three zero eight five. Uh, I think something has given about uh, start motor. So that is not the function, no. So I am asking what is the function of the flywheel, exact function of the flywheel. So I have given it to you. Uh, I want to check whether you have got it correctly. So I am asking. So I have here. Uh, um, showed you using this graph by taking from it also you can tell the function. So what is the exact function? So by looking into this graph as well you can uh, tell it. Uh, 314 power transfer from engine to the gearbox. Uh, actually, that is not a function by the flywheel. It is a function of the power transmission system. Okay. Uh, then something uh, provide energy for compression. I'm taking it. So we we'll later we can correct it. I think you can learn a lot from your mistakes. Then things I'm telling here. And uh, the next one. A make it here. Provide energy for the compression of the piston. We we'll take and we'll see. Store power. And Madara store the power for suction, compression. Very good. I think uh, her answer is the correct one out of all the answers. Store the power for suction, compression, generate and store power at the suction stroke and compression stroke by 2165. You take all the answers and get correct them, okay? So I think we can now uh, go into your answers. Actually, first one, make an energy continue. Uh, actually, uh, uh, the, the answer is given inside your answer, okay? It's not exactly given. So here you can see uh, another one. By far, the must note how the balances of energy provided by combustion in the cylinders and provide energy to the pistons. We take that one. As a temporary receiver. And that is by Fatima Shun. It's a temporary song. So actually, here the answer should be like this. So you can see, uh, if we take the flywheel, here the flywheel power is given. If 
we take the flywheel, what actually happens is you can see based on this graph, it, it, it stores the power received during the power stroke. That is number one thing. So you can see power is refilled at the point of power stroke. Then, not only that, we know piston and flywheel are connected together. So, connecting rod and crankshaft. So, then you can see now piston can take power from the flywheel. So, for that, flywheel has to provide that stored power to the piston to conduct exhaust suction and the compression. Then automatically at the power stroke, again, it is refilled with power. It means it has to, for refilling, means it has to store the power. So uh, that should be the answer in simple way. Flywheel has to store the power received during the power stroke and it has to give that power back to the piston to function exhaust, suction, and compression strokes. Is it clear? So if you consider the uh, second one, store energy from power stroke. So this answer gets only 50% marks. Only the story. It doesn't include the way of giving back. So here, if I take the third one, it mentions only the compression stroke. But that is not the answer, correct answer. Not only for the compression, but also it has to give power to the exhaust and suction as well. So here you have to include uh, suction uh, and exhaust. And also you have to mention about uh, the, uh, the storing one. It also storing the power that is missing here. Uh, the, this answer also, it doesn't include storing one as well as it only includes giving power only for the compression. You have to include other two strokes as well. Again, this one, this way. And you can tell it at which stage you can store it. This doesn't generate It doesn't generate. And uh, the next one, smooth out the pulses of engine provided by the combustion in the cylinders and to provide energy for the compression stroke of the piston. Uh, again, there is an error. Actually, uh, I think she has given that smoothing. Um, actually, uh, fly, uh, flywheel cannot do the smoothing process. Smoothing process only can be done by having more number of cylinders. Okay. Um, it means like this, okay? So if we consider, so normally speed is proportionate to the power. What I'm telling is, as I think uh, she has mentioned a good thing because then we can have a small discussion about that one as well. I'm telling you, uh, take two runners, A and B. A is having more power. B is having less power with compared to A. Definitely, A is running faster than B. I think you all have get this, got this clear. A is having higher power with compared to B. So when they are running together, A is running faster than B. That is because A having more power than B. But 
if we consider here, assume that if we are going to uh, engine, if we are going to plot the engine speed along the strokes, then what would happen? Assume that now I'm going to at this uh, level, like this. Speed of the flywheel. So that is given in it is given in red color. If I can plot the speed of the flywheel, it is like this, okay? At the power stroke, it is having the highest speed. At the compression, having the lowest. Again, at the power stroke, power goes, speed goes up. Then, then continuously, speed is reducing. And again, at the power stroke, it comes to the maximum level. Then throughout the strokes, that is going to be reduced. So if I, if, if I can make the speed chart, that would be like this. So that is why we can't have a comfortable drive in a two-wheel tractor. I think you have got it. But compared to a car, the driving is not any more comfortable in case of a two-wheel tractor because it has only one cylinder. But if we consider a car, a motor car, a motor vehicle, a newest one, they are having more number of cylinders so that they can smooth the operation. Uh, what, I'm, what I want you to tell is flywheel itself cannot do that one. Uh, in in multi-cylinder engines, they can maintain the power always at an equal level, like this. So that is why so most of the uh, new vehicles, they are having more number of cylinders. Because of that, they can have a smooth power generation process throughout the engine cycle. So I just make that one because she has mentioned this smoothing one. That's why I have mentioned it. So the got a four wheel like a one line can decline. Uh four wheel tractor two wheel tractor then Apikatu Bodakar to four wheel tractor Sara Lankari, Bodak Tani cylinders to line at the Hatarai. Two wheel like a Sapeksha, driving comfortable. Have a car like a Sapeksha comfortable. Okay, thank you. So if there is more number of cylinders, we can smooth this line. And uh, this thing also happened. Don't worry that if you can't get this, because uh, that is not going to be evaluated uh, because uh, in a tractor, so we are having after a certain time, only we are having a power slope, but having different cylinders, having more cylinders, we can set the engine always to have a power stroke. Okay? It means assume that there are A, B, C, and D cylinders. At a time, if, if I take the first cylinder A, when it moves to a power stroke, then the second cylinder is having another stroke. So the, the first one is having the exo stroke, then the second cylinder can go for a power. Likewise, always, all the time, the engine is in a power stroke. In that case, that is why they are, these engines are using more than one cylinder. It means always engine is having a power stroke. There's no way to drop the power. Okay. Uh, so that is why we are having much comfortable uh, driving in a uh, new car than a tractor or a two-wheel tractor because it has more number of cylinders. 
and uh, here also we have to include, you have to include uh, not only giving the uh, compression, giving for the suction and exhaust layers. And the next one, act as a temporary receiver, halfway correct, but it hasn't included the way of giving back energy for the three other strokes. And if I take the exact answer, it is like this. Function of the flywheel. So, store the power received in the power stroke. Give it back back to the exhaust. Compression and exhaust suction and compression strokes. And compression strokes. So that is the exact function of the flywheel to store the power receiving in power stroke and give it back to the piston to go for exhaust, suction, and compression strokes. And these are the answers given by you, okay? And then uh, uh, at the end of the power stroke, the flywheel is somewhere around here. Now can anyone tell at the end of the power stroke, what is the total rotation of the flywheel? What would be the total rotation? Not 720. At the end of the power stroke, yeah. 540 degrees. 540. Yes. So it means always at the end of each stroke, it adds another 180 degrees. And so now we are coming to the last one. That is exhaust. And actually, the, the purpose of the exhaust stroke is to expel out all the combusted gas inside the cylinder. We have to remove. That is why we need the exhaust stroke. So for that one, And I'm taking care of that things there. So now at the end of the stroke, the study is starting some from here. And now during stroke, what happens is
system is moving from VDC level to the TDC. And uh, so at the very beginning, I think you all can remember, I mentioned you two pathways of gas accumulation. One is outside to the in, which is by air filter, air passage and the inlet. And now we need the second passage that is from cylinder into the outside uh, through the pathway starting from exhaust van, air passage and the silencer or the muffler. So here, Here also, uh, same thing happens, okay? So just I uh, put this one as open, but it is fully open only at the middle of the stroke. It means until the middle of the stroke, it continuously open. Then after the middle of the stroke, it continuously closed. Anyhow, throughout the stroke, it remained as open, either partially or fully. Anyhow, it is open throughout the stroke. So now, uh, so now the piston goes from VDC to VDC. Now, First well is open. Well is open. Here, seeing the internal volume, here also decreases. As a result, As a result, cylinder internal pressure is increased. <laughs> makes a pressure gradient gradient outside pressure gradient uh, pressure gradient out to the engine. Uh, Pressure gradient, uh, which makes a pressure gradient from um, inside to the outside. Uh, which makes a pressure gradient from inside to the outside of the engine. So we know that the exhaust valve is open by using the gradient. Pressure gradient or the bus gas with 
removed. Pressure gradient is now from inside to the outside. And this makes all the combustion gas out from the cylinder. So at the end, so if I take this as here like this, at the end of the process, uh, now the flywheel is somewhere around here. So then at the end of the process, what is the total rotation? So what is the total rotation? At the end of the so, adding another eight hundred under under eighty. So it should be seven hundred twenty. So Again, it is another important point. You can see in this four stroke engine cycle, at the end of the all four strokes flywheel or the crankshaft. So, flywheel or the crankshaft, these components are rotated complete to rounds. So, that is another important point. We'll take it here. So these are definitely in your MCQs, okay? Yes, sir. A four stroke. Completes an engine cycle flywheel Rotates four rounds. Four rounds, seven hundred twenty piece of. Hand. So it is rotating two rounds when completing a single inch cycle. So I will rotate two rounds. This is another important fact. So that is the end of the engine cycle. So we know the four main strokes now. And uh, uh, we know what are the significance uh, significances of each stroke if it takes suction. Uh, incoming of air is the significance. And if we take the compression, compressing the air is the most important thing. And during the power, we know that is the active stroke, that is the point where the engine gains power. And finally, the fourth one is that is important because we have to expel out all the combusted gas out from the cylinder. So we know the process now. Uh, we'll see that video again and now see that you can understand the process. And at the end of the video, if you can understand clearly, so please uh, put into your chat. Yes, if it is no, please put no, okay. So we'll now see that video again. Uh, just give me a minute.
So now, uh, see this video and now check whether you can understand this. Whether you can understand or not.
So, um, everybody clear? Okay. It's okay. How about the whole process, whole engine cycle? Is it clear to you? I think, uh, yes, I think it is okay. Yes, I think it is yes, very good. Yes, very good. So, so, using that process, many questions can be given. And as we mentioned in the very beginning, so engines, um, many components, they have engines. Engine is a common for many components. So, why? And that's why uh, I have get some big focus uh, to you about it because this the uh, 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 most important one in many agricultural machines. Uh, and there's a question, but uh, it was under gases. So uh, actually, actually, they are the results of the combustion. No, it includes water, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and many other things. Okay, I think it clear, Fatima. It includes water, and most of the thing results from the combustion. The gas consisted of the things which are resulted from combustions. And mainly in fruit, because if we consider fuel, they are carbon. And then combusted mainly resulted uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and water. And other than that, there are so many other things sulfur dioxide, sulfate, and a lot of things. Um, yes, I think if it is clear for you that the next part is so uh, with regard to the engine cycle. So, Actually, there are two main things. One thing is related to the piston movement. There's another part. So we haven't discussed it yet, how the valve movement happens. So in the next session, I'm going to discuss that one. So then we can complete the engine part. So then now the time is 1.30. So we'll have a 30 minutes break and then shall we start the final session? Is it okay? Okay. We'll start by 2. Start by two, then we can have the final session. Thank you. Then we start by two. Okay. Recording stopped. Shall we start again? I think now there are 86 participants. Shall we start again? Is it okay? So I'm going to now do the second part of this lesson. We will do it. So, uh, <clears throat> During this session, I'm going to discuss about the concept given here, that is land and something. So now I'm going to discuss about this one, the valve mechanism. So, uh, to discuss this one, I'm going to use this small table.
So they are here I'm putting the stroke. So they are suction. Compression, power, and final exhaust. So here the <coughs> first row I'm going to add uh, that is about in that band. And the second row is about Exhaust when so you know during the suction stroke inlet valve is opened and if we consider the suction stroke, if we consider the exhaust valve, what about the exhaust valve? Is it open or closed? <laughs> Closed. Yes, it's closed. And the, the special thing regard to compression and power stroke is what? With regard to valve opening. What is the special thing during the compression and power strokes regarding to these two valves? Closed. So yes, they, the two valves are closed during the uh, compression and power strokes. Closed. Let's see, yeah? it's also closed. And um, yeah. With regard to exhaust valve, during the suction stroke, we know inlet valve is <coughs> closed and the exhaust is opened. So likewise, you can see That's given here. The way of controlling this or the way of functioning this thing is known as well mechanism. It means during the suction only the engine has to open the inlet valve only during the suction. And throughout the process, throughout the cycle, uh, the valve has to be closed. And if we get the exhaust valve, only during the exhaust stroke, it has to be open. And during rest of the period, it has to be closed. This opening process, and the total process is known as valve mechanism. So in this session, I am discussing with you how this uh, mechanism happens. So for that, uh, I'm going to uh, make uh, some improvements in the, the initial uh, drawing we, we made here. So I'm going to add some other components here. So here you can see um, with regard to valves, I think you all, you all can see there is a spring. So I'm going to add that one as well here. And because to discuss valve mechanism, you need to know those components as well. So I'm going to add 
those new components here. So I'm just going to add the spring here first. Uh, now think that now I'm going to draw this the way how we can see it from here. So you can see the side where I'm moving the cursor. If you can see it from here, how it looks like, that is the thing I'm going to draw here, okay? Now we are going to look at the same structure from this angle. So here first I'm going to add this band there. So we'll discuss here as the valve is open, okay? So then it would be like this. Now this is now this open. So with regard to this question we are discussing, uh, we are going to make the drawing here, okay? We will see how it is open, the way of opening it. So now I'm just going to add the spring here now. Because there's a spring. So it is a spring, and there's another one to hold that spring. There's a spring holder. And here you can see, try to get this point as well. So you can see now that blue color one is the inlet one. So we, here we are just describing the exhaust stroke. Assume that we are describing the exhaust stroke. And during the exhaust stroke, the exhaust valve is opened. Now it shows you the way, the way it is opened. And now, uh, try to see the way how I'm going to include this spring here. You will learn it step by step.
So you can see with compared to the spring of the inlet valve, now the spring of the exhaust valve is now somewhat compressed. So the exhaust valve spring is compressed and if you take the spring of the inlet valve, it is in somewhat a kind of, it is in a kind of released position. So the in, spring of the inlet valve is in released position, but you can see the spring of the exhaust valve, now because now we are drawing, just thinking the engine is now in the exhaust load, because we are going to now discuss about the valve mechanism. And the spring of the exhaust valve is compressed. And you can see another one, uh, just above the springs. There's another structure there. We are going to include that one as well here. So then uh, about this, uh, well, there's another structure you can see here. I'm going to include that one as well here. And this low color new structure is known as local arm. The new structure now is known as local arm. So you can see in a single cylinder engine, there are Two rocker arms each for uh, um, uh, uh, there are two rocker arms uh, each have to operate a single well. So there uh, this is how it looks like. So now I'm going to uh, show you the, the other view position here. So I'm going to show you how it's there.
So the blue color one is broken arm. You can see uh, the way here it looks like is compressing the uh, exhaust valve. So now I'm going to add another thing as well here. So you can see here, if we consider this shaft, this axis, axis, we know it is the crank shaft. At the end of the crank shaft, I told you there is a special type of J. And uh, here you can see two uh, gear wheels. One is bigger than the other, which are in black color. Normally, these types of gear wheels, gear, these types of wheels or the gears are known as timing wheels. So I'm going to give that wheel here. The two wheels are known as timing wheels. Then, based on the shaft, where the gear exists, or the based on the shaft, where the gear is connected, we can give a specific name for each wheel. Okay. Uh, it means, me wheel like a tiyana tanano, sammand vela tiyana shaft te kanoa, apite wheel like a vishesha nama kiyana pulo. So, we know the 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 shaft here I have already given is the crank shaft. Then can anyone tell what is the name of this small wheel? What is the name of this smaller wheel here? We know they are tiny wheels. Can anyone tell the name, exact name of the small wheel here? They come a tiny wheel, but I told you based on the shaft, it, it is fixed. We can give a specific name for the wheel. So I'm asking then, what would be the name of the small wheel here? Camshaft. Yes, it is attached to the crankshaft. So the name, uh, it is attached to the crankshaft. Then it, the name should be crankshaft timing wheel. Crank timing wheel. Any one is okay. And you can see here, there is another shaft. Here I am highlighting that one. I think you all can see that one. This is the first shaft. And other than that, there is another shaft here. The second shaft is named as cam shaft. Okay. So this is the crank shaft. The name of the second shaft is cam shaft. So here, the name of the second shaft is cam shaft. Here, the, the The smaller one is crank. Timing. And I told you the, the name of the other shaft is cam shaft. Then can you name the name, uh, can you name this big wheel here? near to the crank timing wheel. The crank timing wheel like a local wheel like a wheel. Shaft timing wheel. Uh, yes, the name is camshaft timing wheel. And now please see the way I am drawing these two wheels here to, uh, to make so I'm uh, 
again going to draw this uh, crank timing wheel. I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to add a new one. I'm going to take this one. here, I think you all can see here as well, I'm going to take the dimension of this wheel like this, okay? you all can see 1.1 centimeters, 1.1 height and width of 1.1. And now I'm going to draw the next one, that is M timing wheel. And for that one, I'm going to use this wheel. And I'm going to highlight it using yellow color. So the bigger one is in yellow color, that is cam timing wheel. The smaller one is the crank timing wheel. So while I'm labeling, so can you count, uh, if we consider the dimensions, uh, height and width of this yellow color wheel was 2.1 into 2.1. And if we take this one, the dimensions are 1.1 into 1.1. So can, can anyone, count the number of teeth each wheel has. So can anyone count the number of teeth that each wheel is having? Number of teeth each has. Can you count and tell? Oh, is it 15? Yeah. You know, color one 32? Yes, then black color, uh, ash color one. Sixteen. Yes, sixteen into thirty-two. You can see uh, if we consider the compare the sizes of these two wheels, the camshaft is almost double of the size as the crank timing wheel. So in the dimensions also. So you can see here if we consider the cam timing wheel, that is the larger one. 
it is almost double as the size of the crank timing wheel. So if you can get that clear, I think that is okay. And so if yesterday you have given it in the chat, 16 into 32. And there is another uh, small component. I think here you can't clearly see it. So we tell I think the second shaft, the name of the second shaft is camshaft. Why we are telling the why we are telling it as camshaft is it contains two it contains st structures named as cam. So if we can see it from here, uh, the cam structure is like this. Okay. I, I, here I'm making the cross section. So I make here, I think then it will be easy for you to uh, understand. So the camshaft contains cams. That is why it is known as camshaft. Cams, cams are means this type of structures. So cam means uh, this kind of structure. Okay? So you will see it. So, so in this engine, there are two valves. To operate each valve, there should be a single cam. So all together, in this camshaft of this engine, should have two cams. So I'm going to show you that one. And here, uh, the, 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 the closer one is the cam which is operating the exhaust valve because we are looking from this end. So the closer one is the cam which is operating the uh, exhaust valve. So that's why I'm putting here using that pink color. And there should be another cam which is for operating the inlet valve. And see how they are different in their pointed direction. So I'm going to have that one as well. I have to give it in blue color because that is for the inlet valve. So if we can see it from here, the two camps of the camshaft looks like this. So you can see they are pointed in different directions, not at the same direction. There's a big reason for big reason behind this. We will learn when we are discussing the mechanism. Okay. Keep that in mind. The two um, point, the pointed edges are directing along different direction, not at the same direction. So if we take this one, it is directing here. And if we uh, check the direction of this point, it is directing somewhere around here. It is pointed somewhere around here. I think you have, uh, is it clear to you? What you wanted to know here, these cams are pointing different along different direction. 
not at the same direction is it clear yes okay, very good yes sir very good so now so because that the the pointed edge of the cam is the one operating the wear so you, you can see here there's another small structure above the uh, above a cam i'm going to add that one as well here different color And here, so I'm going to name them again. So in blue color, you can see the local arm. It's also a local arm. Here you can see a compressed spring. There are a few new things. So this uh, purple color rod is made as push rod. And then this uh, orange color structure It's named as Napa. These two structures are known as M. Problems. So one is for inlet and the other one is for exhaust. So that is how it looks like. Um, so you can see. I think you can realize how it is open. So what happens is um, when the pointed edge comes to this level, that cam point pushes the push rod up. So here rocker arm acts like a seesaw-like structure. 
So when the pressure comes from comes through the push rod, one in goes goes up while the other moving down, almost like in a seesaw. So that uh, in, through that force rocker arm, you can see it opens the valve or rocker arm, pushes the valve down. Then you can see it is. Open. Okay, I'm again telling you. So the the camshaft is camshaft also rotating because you can see this cam timing wheel is fixed to the uh, crank timing wheel is fixed to the crankshaft. So when the crankshaft is rotating, you can see because of this gear teeth, uh, power is transmitted to the cam timing wheel as well. So the cam timing, uh, the camshaft is also rotating. When the camshaft is rotating means these cams are, uh, the, the cam points are also rotating. So the when a cam point comes to this level, it pushes the push rod up, which makes uh, a, a, a down movement at, at the other part of the rocker arm which makes or which makes the valve open or which pushes the valve down that is the way how a valve is open so you can see here in normal position a spring is in released position but when it is open you can see when a valve is open spring is going to be compressed Normally, in, in normal position, uh, springs are in the release position. They are, they are standing normally. They are uh, freely standing. But when opening a valve, you can see a spring is going to be compressed. Now, closely looking into this, can anyone tell what is the ex exact function of the spring here? We know with the help of the rocker arm, if we get the function of the rocker arm, you can see the function of the rocker arm is to open a valve by pushing it, pushing the other um, end down. It can open a valve. So can anyone tell what is the exact function of the spring given in here? You can also put it in the chat as well. So the function of the rocker arm is clear. Function is to open a valve, we need the rocker arm. By taking the, the push given by the rod, the following rod name push rod, the other end of the rocker arm can makes the valve open as it can push us the valve down. So I'm asking, what is the function here? What is the function of the spring given in here? Spring is the function of the spring. Spring is the function of the spring. Just also remember, what we have discussed in the earlier lesson. Based on valve opening and closing. So it will... No. Automatically close. Yes. Here. Assume that if there's no any spring, what would happen? Assume in that way. If there's no any spring, it couldn't open the Previous position. Very good. I think the second one, no? 
it can't again come to the previous position. It means it can't open or close. If there's no any split, which one is correct? Can it be closed again? Yes, very good. I think um, fine. So, but it but it can't do if there's no any spring, open or close. Yeah. Close, sir. Yes, very good. So, if there's no any spring. I think I have mentioned you, opening is done by the rocker arm. Still there's the rocker arm, it is happened. But the thing which is not happened is the closing one. Because spring is the one responsible to keep well as closed. Because we know if we are compressed a spring, it is always trying to come to its released position or its previous position, here that advantage has been taken. So by placing a spring after moving away, so you can see here, after the cam pointed it edge, moving away from the tappet, now on the valve, there's no any downward push is given. So at that time, spring easily can move back into the previous release position and it can keep the valve as closed. Can make a point and take a in which a gaman push on taking Roka make a Malayak din, neck in Roka make a third letter, where like a Palihat and Lukarang in the day. A bay spring it in the Mukadi in the spring a king karandi, spring a balani. It always try tries to come back to its previous position or the release position. So that makes the valve. Closed again. Is it clear? Is it clear to you? So, Mithana Valve, X was Valve, and this is. Oh, Mithana X was Valve. Same for the inlet as well. So, in the in the okay. next, uh, next part, we will add that. Okay. okay, I think how many has uh, three zero three three yes. Uh, then Kanchana yes. I think many have given as yes. I think it is okay for you. Uh, so uh, you will uh, learn uh, in, in the next part how these uh, camps are moving and how it can control the opening of two wells at the relevant position. So we know during the suction only we have to open the inlet valve. As well as during on the exhaust only we have to open the uh, exhaust valve. Other uh, time, all other time we have to keep them as closed. So we will next see how it happens. The way the valves are, the, the way how these two valves are open and closed, we'll see next, okay? I think uh, this part is clear for you, so I'll now move into that one. Recording in progress.
Another small one. So few things to write down. So there are two timing wheels now. Uh, so the one that has to the crank uh, shaft. The bank shop is crank and then the timing wheel Ice gas large. This is larger than the crank timing wheel. This is larger. Twice as large in size as spring. The function is just to close a valve or keep the valve as closed. So these are the two main functions of the rocker arm and the spring. So now we can go to the and next we'll see how the valve mechanism happens. It means how the inlet valve only open during the compression, only during the suction, and throughout the rest of the period, how it is being closed, how it is kept as closed. And also see how the exhaust valve is only open during the exhaust and how rest of the period it is being kept as closed. Uh, before that, another thing.
So I'm going to make the same table here in a different way. So I'm going to name the uh, uh, change the name here. Here instead I'm using spin. And here also I'm uh, index spring and the exhaust spring. So inlet spring, what can you tell about during this action? Is it compressed or released? In, yes, it is compressed. The way of opening a valve is compressing a spring. Compressed. And throughout the process, throughout the time, it is in released. Released mode. And how about exhaust spring during this action? Is it released or compressed? Released. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There it is compressed. Oh. Then it is compressed. And throughout the process, it is released. So then I move to the, then we can see how the valve mechanism happens. Okay. So here, uh, I think uh, here you can see a same drawing as we did today. Here, uh, focus on this thing. Here, the, all the things relevant to inlet valve given in blue color. And all the things relevant to the exhaust valve is given in this maroon color or the pink color. So we'll see how this mechanism happens. And you can see this is a, a piston and this is the connecting rod. This is a crankshaft. And you can see this camshaft. So normally to operate uh, in a single cylinder engine, there may be two cams, each one for the inlet and the other one for the exhaust. So this is taken from a multi-cylinder engine. So we need to only consider this part, uh, only the, this part because in, in case of a, a single cylinder engine, we need to consider only this part. And see the pointed edges. They are not pointed at the same direction and they are pointing at different directions. So you can see, if you take this one, it is pointed somewhere here. And if you take this one, it is pointed somewhere around here. So likewise, they are not pointing on the same direction. You will realize why is it like this? Okay. Uh, and here, I'm going to uh, separately show you how the things relevant to inlet works, as well as how the uh, things relevant to exhaust work. The top one is the one giving at the, the first row is the uh, how the inlet valve works, and down to it, it shows how the exhaust valve works. 
here I think you you can remember I mentioned you uh, we are discussing the uh, engine cycle mainly based on the uh, piston movement with relevant to piston movement we are discussing about this cycle and piston movements happen based on the flywheel motion so here I'm going to consider both rotations in purple color, I am going to consider the rotation of the flywheel. And using green color, I am going to consider the rotation of the cam shaft or cam timing wheel. Color part in the cam wheel like rotation like the part in the crank uh, crank shaft like in the flywheel like rotation. So we'll compare the rotations as well and then see how the valve mechanism happens. So now we are going to start the suction stroke. This is the very beginning point. And step by step, we'll see what happened. What happened to these two valves. So the top one is inlet, the bottom one is exhaust. So now the very beginning of the process. Now we are starting uh, the stroke. So yeah, now you can see after the flywheel has moved, has rotated 45 degrees of angle, then the valves are look like this. So we know during this action, we have to open the inlet valve. Now you can see the pointed edge has started doing that. Now it is slowly pushing the push rod up, which makes the downward pull on the downward push on the uh, inlet valve. So let's go further. So I told you, I think you can remember the middle at the middle of the at the middle point of any stroke. The, the middle of a stroke is the point where the valves are uh, where a valve is open at its maximum level. We are the point we can see a valve as fully open. So now it is at the middle of the process because now the flywheel has rotated 90 degrees of angle. Means that is the middle portion. Because in a stroke, flywheel rotates only 180 degrees angle. Half of that is the middle. So now the now we can see the middle of the stroke. I think you all can remember, I have told you uh, from uh, up to the uh, middle of the stroke, it is continuously open. Then onwards, until the end of the stroke, it is continuously closed. So you can see at the middle of the process, that is the... Uh, and you can see here the pointed edge. It is now perfectly directing uh, above. So you can see how that is how it is fully open. Now the, the, the pointed edge is totally uh, placed as upward. Killing order to the end. So we'll go further. In the middle point, now it is continuously being closed. I think you all have get that. <laughs> got it. Got that part. Am I correct? With them, they come continuously. I know it was continuously. So now we are at the end of the first stroke. So you can see during the stroke, the valve has opened until the middle of the push, middle of the stroke. Then continuously again, it has been closed. Anyhow, throughout the process, the valve is either partially or fully it has been open. So you can see at the end of the process, 
flywheel has rotated 180 degrees and now the cam has completed 90 degrees of Bottom one as well. So we know during the suction stroke, inlet valve should remain, uh, exhaust valve should remain as closed. So you can see here, no any pointed edge so far has meet, has met this push rod until the end of the stroke. You can see it, the, the maroon color one, the pointed edge has not so far met the push rod. That's why it still remained as closed. So we'll move to the compression stroke. And we know that during the compression stroke, both valves should be kept as closed. We'll see, is that happening here? So always I'm here giving the flywheel or the crankshaft rotation as well as the uh, camshaft rotation or the cam timing wheel rotation. So you can see throughout the process, still no cam is, uh, no any pointed edge so far has met the push one. The two pointed edge edges are still directing away from the push rod. Because of that, you can see during the compression stop, no valve is open. And we'll go further. Now we are in the power stroke. We know even during the power stroke as well, both valves should be kept as closed. So you can see it. So we have the uh, power stroke. But now you can see when you consider uh, the exhaust uh, valve, now you can see now the pointed edge of the, the, the pointed edge of the cam, which controls the exhaust valve now is much closer to the push rod. It means in the next stroke, definitely that one meets with the push rod, which makes the push rod up, making a downward push on the valve, which makes the valve, which makes the valve open uh, during the stroke as how, as what, as what we discussed in the suction, uh, the, as what we discussed for the inlet valve, uh, Similar to that process, it is also going to be open. So now you can see the pointed edge has met the uh, push rod. So similar to the things what happened during the inlet, now happening to the exhaust. So you can see until the middle of the process, it is open. And then towards the end of the process, it is continuously closed. Finally, you have to look into this one. This is much important one. So we know during the engine cycle, flywheel rotates or the crankshaft rotates two rounds. Oh, 720 degrees of angle. So what about the camshaft? What can you say about that? When completing a single engine cycle, how many rounds does the cam does the cam rotate? One round. Only one round, yes. So you can see, and even in the size also, cam, if we take the cam timing wheel, it is twice as the size of the crank timing wheel. It means the speed of the cam timing wheel definitely should be half as the speed of the crank timing wheel. So when completing a single engine cycle, you have to remember, you have to keep that in mind. 
crank crankshaft or the crank timing wheel for takes two rounds while the crank. Uh, I think uh, is is this clear for you? Is it clear to you? What can you say? Is this process is uh, is this one clear to you? So the uh, crankshaft is the one uh, 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 the revolve two times, isn't it? Yes. If we okay, take sir. crank timing wheel or crank shaft or flywheel, when because three things are the two wheels are in the same shaft, they are fixed together. So shaft and two wheels are having the same rotation. Uh, actually, uh, the, the the crank shaft rotating much faster than the camshaft. So, what about this one? Is it okay for you? The valve mechanism. Is it clear? Is it clear to you? So, if it is clear to you, I think uh, we can go for a small exercise and uh, wind up this session. Is it clear or you need more explanations? Yes, yeah, sir. So what about the others? Uh, so cam rotation again at the product with the current pull on the catch current very well. That process, yeah. Yes. Rotation, Nick again. Ah, with the So you can see here at the end of the process. So I told you, I uh, throughout the process, I'm giving here the rotation of the crankshaft and the rotation of the camshaft. So you can see at the end of the process. So here, at the end of the process, it has rotated 360 degrees. And at the end, we know the flywheel rotates only two rounds. When we consider the sizes of the two wheels, you know, uh, the crank timing wheel is the one smaller in size. It means definitely it rotates faster speed than the cam wheel. And we know uh, the cam wheel is twice as larger than the crank timing wheel. Then definitely the speed should be half of that. It means uh, definitely camshaft uh, should rotate half of the speed than the crank timing wheel. So, thank you. But I don't know if you want to go to the no, no, he won't. Ah, uh, just you need to get here the way these valves are open, 
and how during the rest of the periods they are being closed. That's all. Okay. Sir, compression stroke के पीछे का product पे ना निकलो professor ठहर Both valves are closed. So you can see um, here, these point attackers are not directing the push rod up, even for the inlet as well as for the exhaust. Okay, so thank so, you, sir. And then we'll do a small exercise and then we can wind up this session. So I'm going to give you a small question. So here, rotates at a constant speed of 3,000 rounds per minute. Per minute. It rotates. How is it over now? Uh, Nine, 19,000. Okay. Just give the answers in the chat, okay? And we'll see. Total number of rotations of the file. How you can get it? Per minute, it rotates 3,000 rounds. So that has to be multiplied by So find out 
It's the second one. Find out the four kinds of cycles. So, can you find out the total number of cycles completed by this engine? If it rotates 3000 rounds per minute and it happens during 30 minutes' time, and the question asks total number of cycles completed by this engine. How much? So just add your answer to the chat. How many cycles does it complete? Can anyone can, what is so so what is what is the number of cycles completed by this engine per minute it rotates three thousand rounds and rotate during thirty minutes time and here asking number of engine cycles completed by this engine. Not the hundred Anushka and then uh, 3138, not hundred. I think one, yes, Taranga, I think her answer is correct. 45,000, uh, no? So we know during the process, it rotates 90,000 rounds. And we know to complete one engine cycle, it needs two rounds. And here it's asking number of engine cycles. So what we have to do is we have to divide this by two. Then the answer is cycles. 45,000 cycles. Then it asks, what is the total in the opening time? So we know time to time, well is open and closed. Here it is asking total, what is the total in the well opening time here? So this happened during 30 minutes time, asking if we calculate the total time, if we, if we can calculate the opening time, it asks, what is the total operating time of the inlet valve during this 30 minutes time? Can anyone give the answer for this? should be the answer. Here now asking the time. The total valve opening time of the inlet valve. If this process happens during 30 minutes time. Uh, yes, I think a B so you have uh, given the answer correct, definitely. So you know, we know that uh, yes, uh, I think 
3179-3026. So you also have given the answer correctly. So we know that if we consider uh, uh, suction stroke, that is, that is the uh, stroke where we see the inlet valve as open. And you can see each uh, stroke has equal duration of time for their completion. So one fourth for the suction, another one fourth for the compression, another one fourth for the power, and another one fourth for the exhaust. So definitely the total opening time. So I told you during the, during the stroke, during the suction stroke, inlet valve is open. So the total inlet valve opening time should be one fourth of the total given time. So here, 30 minutes divided by four, we can have the to total inlet valve opening time, 7.5 minutes. Is it clear? Make a pair of is it clear to you? Yes. Okay. So then I think, uh, so we have done most today in the, today well, we have mostly focused about engines. So next time we'll, I think this is the most difficult part. So the next parts are not much uh, longer than this one. We can just complete them quickly. So that is all about today. So if you don't have any questions, we can wind up the session and in the next session, we can do the rest of the things. So do you uh, put uh, the slides? Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'll give them all. Okay. And uh, them working them. notes also? Yeah, yeah, both. I will give them. Yeah. Okay, sir. Hey, if you don't have any questions, so then we can find out the system. No? So if you have any questions, you can put it in the chat or you can directly ask. Yes, you will have MCQs, mainly from this part. So if you don't have any questions, so, so thank you everyone for being with this session throughout the day. So then we can, we'll do the things in the next session, okay? Probably at next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.
Recording stopped.